Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Sam Ivey reporting for The Media Speaks. For those of you that don't know, we are live, if you happen to be hearing this at 4.15 in the morning, 6.25, 13. Anywhere around about there, do me a favor and click on the link. It's on my Facebook. You can do that at any time. You are welcome to be a live part of the show. Make sure you tune in and watch. We are doing these live. I am on and giving you the news long before Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity are out of bed. All right, guys. Watch your cash. New bail-in rules will force failed bank losses on investors. SHTFPplan.com uh, hit censor. I'm going to swear. Shit hits the fanplan.com. Guys, I've said for a long time, do not put your money in banks. For those of you that might owe money to student loans, if you save your money in banks, at some point they're going to take that money from you. Meanwhile, even when you're paying, like I'm doing, they're compounding your interest rates. Sometimes you send them a hundred bucks and they get ten dollars of it because of your interest. So don't use banks if you're one of those people. Maybe you're somebody that's got a whole lot of money and you look down on what I just said. You should have had more money. I've got lots of money. Look at me. Do me a favor, asshole. Don't leave your money in banks because even though I think you're a jerk, I don't want you to get ripped off. Well, I kind of do, but not by the federal government. I dislike them even more than you. Don't put your money in banks. And if you don't believe me, look what happened to Cyprus. At some point, the banks are going to fail and they're going to take what they need and they're going to take it from you. My point being, whether you're somebody who has no money and whether you're somebody that has a lot of money, you need to get out of banks. Now, I'm somebody that wants to open a private business. I want to open a nightclub called The Looney Bin. I have a business plan drawn up for it. As a matter of fact, we need a message on my comment line if that sounds like something you would like to do and you hate top 40. There will be no top 40 or no hip hop in my club. Maybe. I like a special night once a week. Maybe. Other than that, no. But I digress. Um, banks, you know, you got to get on a small business loan. That's my point. Well, okay, but don't do any more banking than you have to. And when you do have to, try to do it through credit unions or whatever. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to do this myself. But I do know this. If I get roped into doing any banking, I'm going to do as little, ba little banking as humanly possible. And I'm not going to give the powers that be the ability to take my savings or my checking or any of my income in any way, shape, matter, or form because my money will not be resting in a bank. That is a damn correct view. Listen to this. When the Cypriot government forced account holders to cover bank losses earlier this year, most of the world assumed that this was a one-off event limited only to the people of Cyprus. Yeah, sure. Through warnings urging depositors to get their money out of banks spread across the world, a few have taken them seriously. Perhaps now they'll reconsider, it says. We're all familiar with bailouts, as in the government rescuing failed institutions, namely banks, by injecting them with tens of billions of dollars to prevent collapse. But have you heard of a bail-in? Japan's financial service agency will enact new rules that will force failed banks' losses on investors, if needed, via a mechanism known as bail-in, according to the Nikkei Mitsubishi UFG Mizaho Financial and Sumimoto Mitsui, are among those proposing amendments to allow them to issue the types of preferred shares or subordinated bonds that would be used in such cases. But for those of you that don't speak bankies, I got you. You don't have to speak like the banks do, that's why you're listening to the correct views. What they are saying in Japan, and if you don't know what the new world order is, uh, the banks are all tied together, what happens there will happen here and vice versa. Um, they are going to take the money 
that you have in banks. See this hair? Well, they call it a haircut. It's not a haircut. They will take your money from the bank if you are stupid enough to have it there. That correct view. Alright guys, PrisonPlanet.com, Paul Joseph Watson. Iraq vet kills himself after being ordered to commit war crimes. This angered me on two fronts. Not only on the front that our government made him commit uh, atrocities and then hide them. But this man committed suicide. His name was Daniel Summers, S-O-M-E-R-S. And I'm sorry. Post-traumatic stress disorder is not a reason to commit suicide. There's something in here that made me understand. Uh, basically, he wrote a suicide note and talked about how post-traumatic stress disorder and the atrocities of what he has done has led him that he couldn't live anymore. My response was, pull up your diaper and expose the people that did it to you. The worst that they could do is kill you. And since you were suicidal anyway, it wouldn't have mattered. You could have spoken out more and complained less. However, the reason I did not have that reply after I began reading it, and that would have been my reply prior, is this. My body has become nothing but a cage, a source of constant problems. The illnesses that I have have caused me pain that not even the strongest medicines can dull. All day long, a screaming agony in every nerve of my body It is nothing short of torture. Beyond that, there are a host of physical illnesses that have struck me down again and again, for which they also offer no help. There might be some progress by now if they had not spent nearly 20 years denying the illness that I and so many others was exposed to, were exposed to. Further complicating matters is the repeated and severe brain injuries to which I was subjected which they also seem to be expending no more effort into understanding. What is known is that each of these should have been cause enough for immediate medical attention, which were not rendered. This is what we're doing to our troops when we send them to wars without end, without purpose, and when we have them commit war crimes. Now, if you really think, and this is going to be an unpopular comment, I'm going to get grief for this one. Here's what I'm going to say. If you're a field commander with 20, 25 years of experience, and you would be willing to stake your career, your name, and your retirement on the fact that you think this person that you have is a terrorist and you're going to torture him, I get it. Okay? Okay. I probably could bend that far. I know most of you listening to this now are typing hate. I can't support any of this. This is rounding up people in mass and torturing all of them to get a tiny bit of information from a few of them. It's wrong, people. It is wrong. Alright guys, Paul Joseph Watson again, uh, The Dark Side of Ray Kurzweil's Transhumanist Utopia. I'm not going to read all of this, but I'll let you go to it. I told you where to find it. Um, here, here's my big problem, guys. I'm going to give it to you right up front. Ray Kurzweil and Paul Joseph Watson, uh, reporting on it, worry about the fear that those who cannot afford to be into the transhumanist, uh, for those of you that don't know, that is Ray Kurzweil, uh, in, in my opinion, how many of you like industrial music? I am a Kurzweil keyboard uh, fan myself. Uh, remember Skinny Puppy, The Process? That was an amazing CD. If you don't know it, download it, listen to it, listen to it again and again and again and again and again, then buy it because it's amazing. Uh, Skinny Puppies, the process, they used uh, uh, Kurzweil's on it. 
This man has predicted a lot of things like Google or Google Glass, uh, the popularity of social networking, and on and on and on. Ray Kurzweil has said that we're going to merge with machines and that those who cannot afford to do so won't be able to keep up. Now I'm not going to go into the moral question, moral question of whether you should or whether you shouldn't. I'm not going to pontificate. What I am going to say is this. I don't necessarily think that that's true. And uh, with all due respect to PJ Dub, who is a far better reporter than I am, let me offer this. I don't think the common man is going to let that happen, Paul. I don't. Mr. Ray Kurzweil, I don't. And I'll tell you why. We've got people building drones now to keep an eye on the drones. Because we didn't let that happen. We didn't let technology take us over. And I'm also going to say, uh, we've got people out there uh, printing 3D guns on a 3D printer. For those of you that don't know, type in 3D printer gun, go to Pirate Bay and go get the how to do it. We're not letting the government tell us what kinds of weapons we can own and when we can own them and what kinds of licenses we need to have to do so. We're doing it our damn selves. Well... I think that's going to happen here. I think if the singularity, as it's called, I think if man merges with machine and uh, it costs a lot of money, I think that you're going to find ways around that. And I think that those who want to join that particular culture at that particular time will be able to do so. I will say this, if this by some miracle gets to Paul Joseph Watson, what I think is going to happen is only going to happen because people like you are reporting on it. So thank you. All right, guys, do me a favor. Go to mediaspeaks.com and click on Nitro Hyphen Pack. It's night. You can find it by Nitro Hyphen Pack. I hate when websites have a hyphen or a slash. Skip it. Go to the mediaspeaks.com and click on the link there. It's easier to find and it helps the media speaks. How many people out there are planning to have some fun this summer? I'm talking about fun, real fun. Want to go some camping, want to do something to get your ass out of the house, especially if you're like me and you live in Ohio, which is the land of like ice and snow. All right, guys, check this out. I'm looking up outdoor gear. Uh, when you go to the site, click on uh, outdoor food and then click on entrees. A dollar and 11 cents. Mountain House pouch of rice and chicken. Two servings. Two servings for a dollar and eleven. We got uh, uh, the ever expensive uh, six dollar and twenty two cents Mountain House pouch lasagna with beef. Two servings. Six dollars and twenty two cents. Uh, let's go on. What else we got? We're going to go some camping. You want some good food? You want to hot dogs for a week, do you? How about the Mountain House Patch Breakfast Skillet Wrap, $5.97. You guys, there's camping needs, there's prepper needs, there's survival needs. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Nitro Pack. I'm going to go to two more articles. For those of you that follow the show a lot, you know I normally go to three more. Well, summer's come up and the sun has come down on all of you and you've quit watching. My views are doing well. My views were doing great. Guys, this stuff still matters. I go to uh, an amusement park that lives by my house. Well, kind of. Uh, by my house every, I don't know, I probably spend well over half of the weekends of the summer there. You know what? I still follow the news. I still do this. Don't just taper off and start letting yourself go mindless because that's when the government likes to do their 11th hour shenanigans all the time. Look at how many things happen on weekends and holidays and New Year's and you, you know, we see it all the time. The last two things I have to get to has to do with the hero, and that is Eric Snowden. One more PJ Dub article, Infowars.com. The revelation that Rolling Stone journalist Michael Hastings was working on a story about the CIA before his death and had contacted a WikiLeaks lawyer about being under investigation by the FBI hours before his car exploded into flames. 
has bolstered increasingly valid claims that the 33-year-old was assassinated. And I'm not a big greeny weenie on the Rolling Stone article thing. I think most of their articles are kind of leftist leaning and lame. But, I mean, this is a man here that did a lot of really good work for the magazine. And for that magazine, that's rare. Hastings died early Tuesday morning in Hollywood when his car allegedly hit a tree at high speed. The Los Angeles coroner's office has not yet been able to officially identify the body as Hastings because it was so badly burned. Go to my last information on this. Everything uh, forensically speaking about this accident implies that nothing that they say officially happened occurred. And you don't have to be a, a genius to, to read the evidence here. Skeptics of the official narrative have highlighted eyewitness accounts which state that Hastings' Mercedes exploded. Images of the vehicle appear to show more damage to the rear around the area of the fuel tank than in the front, leading to the speculation that a car bomb which ignited the fuel could have been responsible for the incident. And I've got a newer article here from uh, Michael Hastings assassinated for work uncovering surveillance state, Kurt Nemo. The journalist Michael Hastings, who died in what authorities have described as a high-speed car crash, was an active member of Project PM, a crowdsourced research effort to expose government intelligence contractors. So the first thing I'd like to see is more people joining Project PM and lots of you trying to expose government contractors. That way they can't blow all of us up in cars. If you care that the surveillance state is expanding in capabilities, that is the government and the authorities and the powers that be and the police watching you non-stop, and intent without being effectively opposed by the population of the West, you can assist in making this an obstacle resource for journalists, activists, and other parties. The Project PM Wiki states, Consider doing a bit of research on companies and government agencies listed on this wiki, or even adding a new topic for investigation by our participants. Guys, I don't have time to do it. I work full, well, almost full time. I am in a band. I run this show and I am writing articles for the media speak, so I'm spent. But go to Project PM and help be a part of the solution. Help make it so that Michael Hastings' memory is not forgotten for what he did for all of us. Because like Michael Snowden, he's a hero who is being badly, badly smeared. You are listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. Uh, signing off. Do me a favor. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. Um, also, please donate to Dana Mowgli Christ. D-A-N-E-A. -E looks like Dania. She runs uh, the Charity Connection. You can look that up even easier. And uh, help us uh, raise money for her. She has lung cancer. And as you can hear by the name, the Charity Connection. This is somebody who ran a... Um, a charity for people who were sick, and now she's sick herself. So please, let's do something to help her, guys. Let's pull together. Um, lastly, any money you can donate to me will go to a better show for you to watch. Thank you for doing so. Good night, friends, and God bless.